Thomas J. Henry Superhero Comic Con 2024. Y'all having a good time? Yeah! It is day three and we're ready to end it with the bank. I brought all of my friends up here. Y'all make some noise for all these Ghostbusters out here. Right now. What you're looking at is chapters all across Texas. These are chapters that do good works, uh, community events. They raise money for organizations in their areas. They do things that help their communities and they are passionate about it. Give them a big round of applause. And they're representing Dallas, Houston, Austin, and right here in San Antonio. All right, are we missing anybody? Are we missing anybody? Who is it? Ernie. Who is it? Ernie. Get on your feet and make some noise for the sex appeal of the Ghostbusters, Mr. Ernie Hudson! some noise for our Ghostbusters on the stage. Thank you guys. Thanks so much. You three, you can stay. The rest of you guys, please find your seats. You guys are witnessing something very special today. Here in San Antonio, we pride ourselves in being open and inclusive and we encourage anyone to join us who wants to help out the community, put on a flight suit, and a proton accelerator in order to do so. So, if you're curious, look up the Ghostbusters of San Antonio. We have three cadets that have been with us for months now, and we thought it was fitting that they should be patched into the group in front of one of their idols and heroes, Mr. Ernie Hudson. Chapters in every country around the world, 
and they raise a lot of money for a lot of really, really good causes. So I'm really proud. San Antonio, Ghostbusters, all the Ghostbusters groups all over Texas. So, you know, thank you guys for being incredible. Thank you guys for supporting me. Forty years, Ernie. Forty years. Yeah. This, you know what I haven't asked you about? It was that, that premiere 40 years ago. What was that like, finally seeing it all put together? Packed house. Where was it, New York? Yeah, we, uh, we did, well first we did a screening in Los Angeles. Uh, small screening and then we had the premiere in New York and there's nothing like a big major studio, big movie premiere with all the cameras and news outlets and people and it's like a big, big, big event and uh, it was really very, very exciting. I've done, I've done some smaller movies up until then. Um, I did a movie called Space Hunter that was a little bigger but Ghostbusters was on a whole other level and it was just really, really exciting. I'm gonna get to audience questions right away. This is from Adam. Where's Adam at? Right over there. Adam wants to know, what was your favorite scene from Ghostbusters to film or your favorite quote from the films? Well, you know, it's funny when you make a movie, there's so many lines that uh, you don't think you just, you know, you just make a movie, say the lines. And now, 40 years later, I realized that for Winston, uh, there are a lot of lines that um, people still will quote, you know, like there's a steady paycheck in it, or that's a big Twinkie, or someone asks if you're a god, or you have the tools, you have the talent. It's, um, yeah, it's been, it's, it's been pretty, um, pretty exciting. I don't remember what the first part of the question was. Uh, your favorite kind of scene, I've or? Been, I've been here a long time. <laughs> the, uh, my favorite scene to shoot? Yep. Um, yeah, it's, um, I think probably the first scene, because the first scene we did was Winston coming into the firehouse, joining the team, and the film, the film for me was just, they had been working a few days, but just kicking it off, and it's always exciting to, now you're, now we're, we're in, and I think that, that was, was some fun, fun scene, but I think that was the initial sort of break in. Absolutely. Valerie has a question. Valerie, where you at? Over there. Valerie wants to know, since you've done Ghostbusters, do you now believe in ghosts? Um, I've always believed in ghosts. Um, I grew up in a family that very, very much believed in ghosts and believed in, you know, supernatural things. And um, So I've always, you know, kind of questioned some things, seen some things that um, couldn't quite explain. I can't really say a ghost has ever came up to me and sat down and say, how's it going? But, you know, um, but I know, I believe that there's something beyond what we can experience. We only have five senses. And, you know, now with the discovery of all kinds of ways and there are things going on that we don't have a clue. So I believe that things going on, they, they say you can't destroy energy, we're energy. So what happens after this life, none of us really know, but um, I believe definitely there's a lot going on that we can't explain or understand. But I do think it's more for our benefit, and I believe that there's spirits that will guide us. I believe the movies don't make money on showing good, happy ghosts, so they like to make them scary and all that, but um, yeah, I'm always believe we got a question here from Tony. Tony, where you at, Tony? Right over there. Tony wants to know, did you ever think Ghostbusters would have developed such a cult following that it would be this popular? When did you know? Well, you know, we did the movie and um, I met the guys. I knew the movie would be successful. Um, I knew we were making something really special. But most movies, they'll come out and if they're lucky, they'll hit number one for a couple of weeks and then it'll you know, something else will come along and take over the top spot and people will forget about it. But what was really exceptional about Ghostbusters was we opened number one and then for weeks, and then it turned into months, we were still at the top of the chart. People were still singing the songs. And what amazed me was after two or three years, people were still singing the songs and making their jumpsuits and their backpacks. 
And then 10 years later, people were still singing the songs and making their backpacks and wearing their jumpsuits and turning their cars into ectomobiles. And then 15 years later, 20 years later, uh, people were turning their kids on to the movies. And 30 years later, uh, so I didn't expect that. Uh, I've done a lot of movies that have been very popular, uh, but uh, there's something about Ghostbusters. And also, the, the interesting thing about Ghostbusters, unlike, say, Star Wars or Star Trek or some of the other big um, franchises, the studios really push those films you know, they got behind them. Ghostbusters, the studios just kind of left it alone. It was the fans who sort of picked up. The fans started making their own, you know, Fan films. Yeah. They, they, uh, and, and, and so it really was driven by the fans. And I was, very, I was very touched by that. Very excited. But no, I had no idea that I'd be 40 years later sitting on uh, a stage uh, talking about Ghostbusters. But I'm very happy and very thankful. I'm very proud to be a part of it. And I'm uh, very proud to be a part of I hear so many stories. I traveled just in Argentina. Um, and so many people from South America came uh, to tell me, you know, stories of when they saw Ghostbusters. Sometimes it's the first time they saw them in a movie theater, or they saw it with their dad or their moms or their grandparents. And so many stories has been a part of their lives. And that's very, it's just very touching and very heartwarming um, to just you know, be a part of something that, uh, that has really gone all over the world. And it's very, very special. Y'all better clap for that. This question is from Juan, and this is kind of a good segue because you were just talking about all these other franchises in cinema. If the Ghostbusters franchise could cross over, uh, what other franchise would you want them to cross over with? What other franchise would I want them to cross over with? Uh, like other movie franchise. Um, you know, maybe Sleepless in Seattle. <laughs> you know, uh, I, I have no idea. Um, so you, you, you're you aware that uh, there's comics out there with you guys and the uh, Ninja Turtles? Oh, that's right, yeah. No, it's, uh, in fact, I saw Transformers. Uh, there's some Transformer toys. Yep, Ghostbusters. The crossover there. So, too. yeah, I mean, that, you know, there's always somebody who'll figure a way to make some money on it. You know? <laughs> Since I'm not getting paid, I really... Uh, not something I think a lot about, but you know what? If they do, and uh, you know, if they need Winston, you know, there's a steady paycheck in it. Hey. I'm, I'm, I'm ready, you know. Uh, Franklin, where's Franklin at? Somewhere. Oh, look at there. Franklin wants to know what was it like filming with the crew in Frozen Empire? You have a yeah. much younger cast in Frozen Empire. Yeah, it's um, you know, we we. You know, life goes on, and um, I love the fact that Egon's family is now sort of, you know, running Ghostbusters. We knew that we had to pass it on to the next generation. Uh, I think they were probably a little bit nervous about just passing it on, so they kind of keep uh, what they call us OGs now, so they wanted us to be a part of it. I think they loved it to kill us off, but just in case. So until further notice, but I really loved the, the new um, McKenna Graves and just uh, and it, it's just a great group of people, very professional. Um, I, I love working with them. I, I always learn from anybody I work with them. So uh, I'm very happy. Uh, but I know that they're, they're more than capable of you know, moving things forward. So uh, yeah, it's just another good thing to say about. There's not a name on this one, but I'm going to take a shot in the dark. This is one of the Ghostbusters. It says, Ernie, how do you feel after a day of shooting wearing a heavy-ass proton pack? Any tips for us Ghostbusters with sore shoulders after a long day of busting? Uh, well, you know, the, um, yeah, sometimes, it, you know, work, especially working long hours, like at an autograph convention when they bring you in it. 11 o'clock and we're still here at 7. <laughs> but, but, you know, there's, um, yeah, they, they, the pack's a little heavy. I like the fact now of being almost 80 years old and, uh, I mean, I'm good. You know, so I got the pack, I'm, 
I'm bouncing upstairs and stuff, you know. But I look over at Danny, and he's sweating very heavily. <laughs> and Billy, who's sort of leaning up against the wall, and, um, and um, you know, so, yeah, it, it is what it is. So if you got to carry a pack, just make sure you're, you're, you know, you're in good shape as best you can. And uh, I, I mean, I love the guy, so I, I'm probably not answering the question well. I, I wish I had made lighter packs, but hats, but they didn't. So, but uh, I have no problem. I'm good. <laughs> no issues here. Next question. Charlie wants to know what it was like working on Grace and Frankie. Any Grace and Frankie fans in the house? Uh, yeah. All yeah. the ladies. Yeah, no, Grace and Frankie, um, it's a great cast, you know, I mean, people that, when I started out, they were already big stars, you know, Jane Fonda, Lily Tomlin, and Sam, uh, Martin Sheen, it's just a great cast. Uh, great people, whenever you work with really good people, you know, you bring your best, and, and the professional ones always bring their best. Uh, but over the years, I've worked with um, Benny Davis, and Lawrence Olivier, and I've had a chance to really work with people who are at the top of their game, and it, it's always inspiring to me because I never want to be left behind. And uh, when I first asked to be in this business, I wanted to believe that I am the best at what I do. So when I see someone, it, it, it's really inspiring. Um, and working on Grace and Frankie, I just, I just have so much love and respect and appreciation for people who are at a certain age and they're still at the top of the game, you know. And um, you know, they're not asking for you know any any help or whatever there they come to work to to dance and I love to dance so uh, I just feel very blessed to be able to be in the mix you get a lot of compliments from your female fans for for the show Grace and Frankie what are some of the things that they, they tell you they most uh, admire about your character on that show um, you know I, I you know I, I don't know um, it's um, you know, different fans will come up about different movies. Grace and Frankie, um, I think they, they think me and Lily make a great couple. Um, but I, um, yeah, I don't know. I, you know, I don't know. It's very hard for me to see what the audience sees. Because, I mean, you work on the show and it's you see the work, but, but people, Whole different things from it, so I don't know what fans think. I don't even know what it means. Say, well, I'm an actor and you're kind of famous. I, I don't know what that means. You know, I mean, it's kind of it's sort of my life. I don't, I don't know. But I'm happy to hear that people enjoy it. You know, I just, it's all just really a job, and I'm thankful that I chose a profession that people said was out of reach, but I believed completely that it was something I could achieve. And now that I do it, it's still just a, a, a job. I'm happy they pay me well, but I would do it probably even if they didn't. But it's, um, yeah, it's, I, I don't know, you know, when I look at someone, some, some so-called stars, and um, I, I see them in a certain way, but I don't see myself that way, but uh, I, don't, I, I don't know. You're a humble guy, aren't you? Well, I don't know if I'm humble, it's just, um, you know, we're kind of all in the mix. I think the only extraordinary thing about me is I'm not extraordinary. <laughs> you know, no, seriously, you know, when you think about it, I'm, I'm, as a kid, I thought, well, I don't have, I'm not tall, I'm not short, I'm not super smart, I'm not, I can't sing that well, I, I'm not a, I don't dance, I don't do. So there's nothing extraordinary, except I had a real, real, real strong belief in God. And in that, I believed in the possibilities that anything was possible. But without that, I, I, you know, I, don't, know, I don't know what I'd be doing. So when I decided to be an actor, I knew that the universe 
could deliver anything I wanted, even though there was nothing about me that would say that I could make it. So, you know, and yeah, so I don't know if that's being humble, it's just that I know that the, the how I got to a certain place was more a tribute to what I call God or the universe than anything that I could have done. Because I'm not that smart, I didn't figure anything out. I just know that if I trust, if I believe, and if I remember to love myself, not be mean to myself, because sometimes you really want to beat up on yourself, but now if God is really real, if he really created me, then I gotta be special in my own mind. But I also know everybody else is special too, so, you know, but, but I have to love myself first because a lot of people will tell you things that aren't very nice, and when I start to believe that, then all the things I want begin to go out the window. So the only thing that makes me know is that if God is real, then anything is possible. And that's why I'm sitting here now. Welcome to the church of Ernie Hudson. This is kind of fitting uh, question. Caesar, where are you at, sir? Back there? Way in the corner, there you are. He says, in the first film, this is the 84 film, there is an exchange between Winston and Ray about God. Uh, was that scene scripted as it was portrayed? I ask because I thought that since Winston's character is considered the everyman character, that it makes it more significant to me that he vocalizes his beliefs in the film. Yeah, no, it was written, it was uh, Danny Aykroyd uh, wrote that scene. But I, I did like, you know, because we, there was so much going on, and so there's, we talk about, you know, things going on that we can't perceive. You know, we have five senses, like I said, and if it's not within our five senses, then we assume there's nothing there. But we know the universe is so much more complex. And I love, I love that scene, too. It's probably my favorite scene in the movie. Um, in this last movie, I love working with Danny Eichberg because he's so, so uniquely funny and talented and different and just a little bit weird. But, I mean, Bill Murray is too in a different way. And, I mean, we all are in our own way. But Danny is really, I don't want to say special, but, uh, but I love working with him and the scenes we have together. And that scene particularly, um, I just really love having the opportunity to, to work with him. And, yeah. This question is from Bobby, age seven. Little Bobby, where are you, sir? Right there in the middle. You got a flight suit on, too? You look awesome. Here, yes. Great question, Bobby. He said, would you like to be a superhero in a movie? Have you ever had that thought? Yeah, I think it would be really fun to, um, I don't know why I haven't done, I did some of the DC stuff, uh, anim the animated stuff, but I haven't done any of the superheroes, realistic, you know, um, or the Marvel stuff. It would be fun to do, but I haven't been asked to do it. And um, yeah, but, uh, but yeah, it would be fun. Great to, you know. growing, growing up, did you ever have like a comic book character that you were, you aspired to be or you kind of um, pretended to be? Yeah, Mighty Mouse. <laughs> Da, da, da. You know, I you know, I love Mighty Mouse. I, I had those cartoons on cassette tapes. Some of you have no idea what a cassette tape is or a VHS tape. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, yeah. No, I think we all love you know the Superman, the Batman, you know all those things too. Yeah, but I think and we all are. There's a part of us that and that's why we love them so much because there's a part of us that is you know brave and daring and strong and we can you know do all these amazing things. So, uh, yeah, it would, and it would be fun to portray that in film, but, um, yeah, you know. Folks, we are just about out of time, but before we leave, I think we have a message from the <laughs> head promoter of Super Bowl Comic Con, Bill Will. How y'all doing? Five years ago, 
This guy called me on a Sunday night. He was at the 35th anniversary of Ghostbusters out to Sony Studios. And he was there. And the Ecto-1, how many of you had your picture taken with him? Okay? I bought that Ecto-1 after he came to the show. He calls me on Sunday night and he says, they told me the car is coming to San Antonio, but I'm not coming to San Antonio. And the great Ernie Hudson, we make a handshake deal on the phone. No agents, no contracts. We agreed the money and he came and we have been friends ever since. And one other thing, by the way, I watched Mighty Mouse too. Mighty Mouse to save the day. I do remember. I don't remember the words. I'm amazed you do, but I do remember. Yes. And I can say I'm older than you, but I'm not. I know. No, you're not. And this is a, he's a youngster. You know, you be my age, you're older than everybody. You know? I'm 71, so. Yeah, I know. I'm, uh, I'm 78. But I'll be 80 next year. So. Okay. Anyways, so Ernie's become my friend. We've done all these special things. You know, a couple of years ago we had him in town. We did a thing up to a movie theater during the COVID era. And, you know, the thing I like is Ernie's hard work. You know, and he and I have had conversations about when it started out. What they paid him to work in the original Ghostbusters movie. If you remember the original poster, Ernie's not one of the four Ghostbusters on the poster. They kind of adapted to that later. But th thankfully, all the family, Jason and those people, they took care of him in the last couple movies. And uh, he's done, he's, he was, he's a star. He is the, this, you're looking at the biggest, most famous Ghostbuster in the world. And you know why? Because he will spend time with everybody. He is the only star that is at this show for three days. He wants to meet everybody. And he takes the time in the booth to sign things. He's there with his wife, Linda, and they work as a great team, and they do great things. And Ernie Hudson is also always welcome in my shows because he takes care of everybody. Thank you so On behalf much. of Superhero Comic Con, you are a superhero. Yeah, you know, it's, it, I was talking earlier about, you know, trusting yourself and that there's a, there's a God or there's a universe that will guide you. Sometimes it comes through prayer, sometimes through meditation, sometimes it's just through hunches and you follow, you know, something, uh, came to me to reach out to this man. I didn't know him. But what I know is that there are people out there that the universe has assigned to help you. They want to help you. They just don't know how sometimes. And so I reached out to him and he's proven to be a genuine friend and a, a man who doesn't have to, but he cares enough and I'm so inspired just by his generosity, just by his kindness. I mean, some people have they're in a position of power and they want to just, I don't know, rely on that power. But some people are just moved by spirit and love. And I just trust this man is. And I'm so thankful to be a friend. Always. Thankful for I'm you. I'm going to do something I've never done in my life. I'm going to kiss oh. a black man. <laughs> yeah, see? The universe moves in mysterious ways. I mean, who would have known? Hey, you know, how many of you see, I saw Peter Weller over there? Woo! So, Peter, I met him the first month. He was being funny in the green room. He says, there's four things I don't do in life. Drugs, alcohol, cigarettes, or men. I just violated that rule, because I don't do any of those other things either. I did a movie uh, uh, called The Vibe with uh, Peter Weller, and uh, he's, a, he's a wonderful friend. Um, but, um, and I'll leave it at that. So, uh, <laughs> I'm happy to see you. So, Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Appreciate you. And, uh, and I gotta say, I'm so happy that you guys are here. It means, when they told me I'd be here at 7 o'clock at night, I thought, nobody's gonna be there at 7 o'clock at night. But you guys are, and it means so much to me. I'm so, so thankful. You just, this trip to San Antonio is made special because of you, and I just, 
I thank God for you. So thanks, thanks for showing up. Appreciate it. Make some noise.